Hi, Scottish Mud Larkin here with Nicole and Craig. Today we've come along to the old port town of Torreyburn on the River Forth. The town is first mentioned in 1296, so there's sure to be some very old things around here. Let's see what we find. You can see the tide line there, you can see that the water's starting to go out. There's an odd mix here, there's clearly a lot of dumped uh, industrial material, lots of bricks, lots of pieces of pipes and concrete. Hopefully in amongst this lot, we'll find some real treasures. Oh, first find of the day. It's a piece of spongeware. Yeah, it's quite nice. Mm. Hopefully I'm uh, blocking the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to use my back to block the wind. Yeah. That's very cool though, it's a very nice piece, nicely yeah, worn, not too nice. frosted. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take that. Yeah, cool. Now that's an interesting shaped piece of glass here. Nowhere near as nice. Oh, there's lots of little sand flies down here. You probably just saw them all explode out from under that rock. Uh, so, now that the sand flies have gone, we can see there's a wee piece of sponge ware here. We can see that there's a wee piece of glass. So let's have a look at them. So that piece of sponge ware then has a little blue uh, marking on it there, but nothing much else. It's quite dirty. It's been in the water for a while. But this caught my eye because of, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a, an edge in here. But we'll take them. Now that's a really, really heavy piece of ceramic that Nicole's just seen. Now what do you reckon that is? You're right, with probably some sort of sanitary wear or at By home. that we mean it's a large basin or perhaps a bath. Have you uh, spotted the snail? <laughs> no, it's just I over have. there. There we go. Oh, it's covered in um, keel worm. <laughs> oh, we've been. We're always trying to document the Scottish wildlife. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Now, <laughs> back, to the, back to the large ceramic thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is, uh, to me, it looks like it's part of a large. In a bath or maybe even a big trough yeah. for animal feed or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's maybe more likely because it's really crude, yeah. not, not like a bathware. Yeah, and there's mm -hmm. several pieces of this around. So we'll take a look at them, mm -hmm. but we've just spotted something slightly up the beach from where we are just now, and it's another really nice piece of spongeware. Ooh. There it is. Nice wee bit of spongeware there. Oh. We'll pop that up on this brick and take a wee look. Mm -hmm. That is very nice and it's got the kind of lozenge shape that a lot of the spongeware has on the on the edges usually. Nothing on the back. No. This looks like the inside, slight curve on there, probably a bowl or something. Mm-hmm. Nice piece. Yeah, we'll take that. Good. And yet more of this really heavy ceramic stuff. I think you know I thought maybe a Belfast basin or some kind of basin. I think this this pretty much confirms that. I'm sorry, I'm slightly distracted. If I just stopped and paused, it's because I've just seen an amazing piece of yellow glass. At least I think it's glass. We'll take a close look at that just now. Right in front of these uh, ugly pieces of ceramic. <laughs> so just oh. here. Ooh. Is it glass? Is it glass? It looks like glass to me. What do you think? Mm, yeah, it's got all the kind of breakage points of glass. Now we need to touch it and see if it's glass. Yeah, okay. Let's take that out then. We'll have a closer look. So what do you think then? Is that a piece of glass? Looks like glass. It is, yeah. It feels like glass. It's not plastic. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's an amazing find. You know, the bright other colour, the rear of the sea glass and this sunshine yellow, that's a really, really rare find here in Scotland. Yay, find of the day already. <laughs> and we've only just started. Let's crack on then. Yeah. So I heard a wee whoop from Nicole and it's all down to this piece of uh, seafoam glass. I'll let Nicole move it around because uh, you'll be able to see what it is as soon as it gets moved around. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. You might see it, you might see it. There you go. 
It's uh, an eighth of a stopper. Well, that's very good. Let's see if we can find a whole stopper. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Or a marble. Let me know if you can see it. I've just spotted this perfect piece that Craig loves so much. Let's drag this out. Oh, lots of little flies around here. Hey, now that's a really nice old bottleneck, very frosted. That's very nice. I'll take that along. I turned around and I found this. Now it looks like a tiny little ceramic uh, bunch of flowers or something like that. Not quite sure what it is. Um, well, I'll take that along, Nicole. A nice wee piece of frosted clear glass here as well beside that. But I think this is a lovely wee thing. Yeah, that gives you a sense of the size of that as well. That's my fingertip. And you can see the size of that little bouquet of flowers there. Really pretty wee thing. I'm going to get along and see if Nicole's had any luck here. You can see the water continues to go out, revealing the sand there and the mud flats. Have you been having any luck then? Well, I have found something and I'm just really going to show it to you guys and it's uh, it's one of the UK insulators so if you are lucky enough to be in the US or in Australia uh, then you have these insulators and they're lovely lovely glass and lots of different colours and that's the kind that we have here <laughs> Yeah, that's really cool though Yeah I have a wee thing here to show you Okay it's tiny. All right. Um, I'm intrigued. I'll see what you make of it. I reckon it's a little bouquet of flowers. Oh. Oh, that's so cute. It feels like it's very light porcelain, possibly. Now that is really nice. I wonder if it maybe came from a little figurine uh, holding a, a bouquet of flowers. I think it probably did, yeah. It certainly has that look about it, doesn't it? Yeah, that's very nice. Cool. Okay, so now all we have to do is find the figurine. <laughs> yeah, the head or the leg or anything like that. The entire thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. This is very cool. Oh, mm. camera's got weird angles on me. That's a very, very cool piece. Very, very nicely lit. Nicole just spotted this and just said, It's a little bit of sick glass. So yep. yeah, that's sick glass. So we're going to take that. 
Now, there are some swans just in front of me, and I promise I will try and get the swans on camera, uh, but just as I was looking for the swans, I just saw this. Now, Nicole's just got, I can see it's not a whole bottle just by the way it's moving there, which is a real shame. Oh, no. Oh, that is a shame. It does. Oh, that's very nice. A wee bit of poison bottle there. Yeah, yeah, you can see the octagonal shape there, yeah. so that's really cool. We take Such that. a shame it's only a ah. wee bit. One day we'll find a whole poison bottle. Yeah, it's a very pretty wee bit. Yeah, yeah, and a lovely colour. Cool. Now tell me if you see it. It's pretty much smack bang in the centre of the screen. It's blue and I'm not really sure what it is yet. It looks like it might be glass. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is glass. It's actually, it's a very nice corner of uh, probably a bottle, but it doesn't look like it's a your regular poison bottle. It's very thin. It's really nice blue. I think we're definitely going to take that. Some more transfer wear there. Mm -hmm. And the bottle here, now you can see there's some lettering on the bottle, it looks to me like it says Neil. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, and but then... But we'll get that out. Saint... There's another wee bit of glass as well. Oops. With With more writing on it. Aha. Let's see. So Neil... Street. Hmm. Is it? Yeah, it is Street. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it's a, a brewery somewhere in <laughs> Neil Street. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've, I've never heard of a Neil Street before. There's this wee piece down here. If you could turn that over, there's some lettering on that as well. Oh. Maybe drop that down on there. We can have a closer look okay, at it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's bovril. Um, it's difficult to I wonder, to see. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we'll take that with us. Yeah. And we'll be able to see if that says bovril or not. Or get a, a, a better idea, I think. Yeah. Cool. What's that hiding beneath the stones? It's a piece of transferware. Now that's a really nice piece of transferware. It's got a very unusual pattern. It's almost like a braille alphabet. I think I'm going to take that. Aha! Now there is one of my favourite finds. It's a piece of milk glass. That's really nice. I like milk glass. also found this piece and I'm going to put it here it looks like it might be a really nice lovely worn knife handle it's really nice it almost looks like a pair of tweezers it's very firm looks to be wood here I think I'll take that it's quirky Now what is this that I have found? I'm going to wait until Nicole approaches so that we can see. I haven't checked to see if there's a hole going through this piece or not. I suspect there may be. A pipe! It's quite slim as well, it's quite thin. Yeah, Want to have a yeah, look yeah. and see if there's a hole in that? Yep. Yay! Yay! Pipe, pipe stem! stem. <laughs> That's quite interesting. If we pop that one down here mm -hmm. for a second, yeah, you can see it box. widens there. Uh -huh. And it's narrower here, so I don't know if that would have been going towards a mouthpiece. It would seem to suggest it was going towards the bowl for yeah. more support for the uh -huh. bowl, I guess. I think so, yeah, yeah. It's right next to this uh, bit of glass. There's a lot of glass here, but that's a great find. That's really cool, yeah. Hey, let's take that. Yeah, let's. Haha, <laughs> there it is. Another pipe stem. Very nice. A piece close to the bowl, little hole there. We are going to clean all the pipe stems up and uh, keep our fingers crossed that there might be a little mark on any of them. Nicole's found a bone! <laughs> yeah, and it looks like it's been sawn in half. <laughs> yeah, so that could have been butchered then, you reckon? It could have been, yeah. Yeah. Ah, there's another bone. I'm seeing that as if that's a great thing. But you can also see this one's also been cut. And Craig's just also found this really lovely piece of pottery. Now that's really nice. It says Venice. It also says Bones, which can which tells us that it was made in the famous Bones pottery. 
we've been finding so many bones in this uh, this area. Nicole's kind of convinced that there must have been a butcher and that it's dumped into here. Now I'm not sure if this is another bone, it's bright red. Yeah, that looks like a bone to me, a much smaller bone fragment. It's been in here for quite some time, getting covered in a whatever it is that makes bones go red. Not quite sure what that is. Wow, that's a huge bone. Really quite large, this one. That's my hand for comparison in terms of scale. That looks to me like it probably belonged to a cow at one point. There's another part of the bone here. I think another part under the water just to here. And this is the part on the surface. You know, it's a funny thing that we find bones on the coast here because they used to be used in a lot of different applications. And there's some pretty macabre stories about how they were used and where the bones came from. Yep, mm -hmm, that's true. It's not unusual to find bones on a foreshore or in harbour areas, and they might have gotten here for several different reasons. But we've been struck by the number of bones that we've found here today. They may be here because they're historic butcher's waste. The cuts across the bones suggest that that could be the case. They could also be animal bones that have washed down the burn and onto the foreshore many years ago. But they could be remnants of an old trade item that we don't give much thought to these days. That is unless you enjoy gardening. Bone has long been used as a fertiliser. Ground bone or bone meal is high in phosphorus and other nutrients that are essential to growing plants. Much like the coal that we find strewn across the beaches of Fife, the bones we see here may have fallen from wagons or ships. Aside from farming, bones have a wide range of uses and they've even been used in some glass and pottery applications. Bone china actually contains bone ash, though some modern bone china is vegan friendly. Milk glass can contain bone too. The opaque quality of milk glass is created by adding elements such as arsenic, tin oxide and antimony. Bone ash does the same job and it's sure that at least some of the old milk glass you'll find on beaches will contain animal bone. But bones have been put to all sorts of uses for millennia. Here are just a few of the things that bones have been used to make. Fish hooks, musical instruments, knife handles and cutting tools or cutlery. Bones have been used in ritual and to glimpse future events. They have been used to make glue and gelatin. Bone buttons were once very common, though they are far less so these days. Perhaps most recently, bone and protein have been used to make biodegradable plastics. And this wee list is far from complete. The vast majority of this bone has come from animals, most often cattle. But it was once not all that uncommon to use human bones particularly the bones of the poor and those who fell in battle. Last week, we mentioned Waterloo teeth, that is, false teeth that were made from human teeth that was scavenged from battlefields. Teeth were very valuable, but other items also attracted scavengers. Jewellery, watches, uniforms, boots, weapons, purses and money, hair, even the bones of the fallen were of value and they were all taken from the battlefield. Bones from battles across Europe were collected and shipped to ports in the UK. In 1822, the Observer newspaper expressed distaste at this practice when one of its columnists published the following statement. It is now ascertained beyond a doubt by actual experiment on an extensive scale that a dead soldier is a most valuable article of commerce and, for aught known to the contrary, the good farmers of Yorkshire are in a great measure indebted to the bones of their children for their daily bread. It's clear from this that many people were not at all comfortable with the practice of using human remains to grow the food that they ate. But it was not just in the UK that this trade took place. Several decades later, in 1886, at the end of the American Civil War, outrage was expressed in the press after shipments of bones arrived in New York and it was suggested that around 25% of the bones to be processed as fertiliser were clearly human. These days, the use of human bones seems unthinkable. The human body was once a commodity that could be bartered and sold for its healthy teeth as a fertiliser or as a medical textbook of sorts. 
It's sobering to think back on this whenever we find a bone among the sand, the stone or the mud. So I don't know about you, but the further along we get, the less cool stuff I'm finding. Although I see what you've got in your hand there, and that's quite cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a Victorian jar, but everything else seems to be a little bit newer. Yeah. Although yeah. I quite like the uh, the diversity of the bricks. There's Hill of Beath and Loch Side and something that's like Cherry Hill or something. <laughs> it's an encyclopedia of Scottish brick manufacturing, yeah, uh -huh. folks. Uh -huh. Yeah. We're going to make our way back along the bay. <laughs> Let's go along that way and we'll see if we can find stuff. That's where we were finding some of the cool finds earlier, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back that yeah, way. Yeah, let's go back that <laughs> way. Let's see what we get. Uh-huh. Nicole's just found something. Of course she has. I'm shooting B-roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What have you got? I don't know. Now, I was wondering if this was maybe a, a very old-fashioned doorbell or the top of a very nice jar that I've not seen before. It looks very much like a doorbell to me. If that's Bakelite, it's almost certainly a doorbell. So there would have been a little white plasticky, or I guess Bakelite, mm. uh, protruding bit here that you would have poked your finger on and it would have rung inside. That's the old kind of, well, I'm not going to try and impersonate an old-fashioned doorbell. Ling ling. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's much more basic than that. Far less electronic than yeah. that. Yeah, I think it's pottery though. Oh. Yeah, so... Uh, well, that throws an oh. onion in the ointment. Actually, no. I don't know. We'll clean it up and uh, have a closer look at it. Actually, it's, it's quite light, so it might just be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> birds don't somebody. want us here. We have <laughs> yeah. angry birds above us. <laughs> it might just be beaker light, so... Yeah. Cool, huh? That's very cool. <laughs> So we've just happened on this wee area here and Nicole spotted some really cool things. So yeah. this is the first of them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So this is... Oh, uh -huh. it's a kick-up. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a really nice kick-up. It is, yeah. And the uh, mamelone, or mamelone, uh -huh, is up. very visible there as well. Mm-hmm. So I've just spotted this little... Uh, old bottleneck here and it does look like it's a 17th century old bottleneck very nice we're gonna take that and I've spotted something else in the mud you can probably just see it in the background there and I have no idea what it is it looks like it might be glass oh it's just a little piece oh that's so nice it's like a little cube like a dice like a bit of a Rubik's cube but an old one so might have been like an, uh, an inkwell not sure I think we're going to take these two pieces. Very cool. A few more fragments of bottles here. A little bit of side of a bottle. Green glass. Bottle bottom. Quite new. But this... This is so thick. There's some writing on there. There's some letters at least. So I'm going to take that. That looks like an O and an A. So it might be Aloha. Uh, which would be a beer brewer. But the glass here is so heavy, so thick. I'll take that along and let Nicole have a wee look at that. And we'll see if we can even find something out about it. Now, I wanted to show you this piece. Oh. It's an O and an A, I oh, reckon. Oh, Aloha. Uh, that's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> Very so, likely. Yeah, that's, that's likely that's the Aloha Brewery then. It is, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the one that is going just now, so this is one of the older pieces. Um, and I found something that it could almost go with it. That is a very cool find. That's very nice. You can see very, very clearly what it says on the bottle. Uh, I'm not sure what it says on the top. Is that Glen Livet maybe? Is that a whiskey bottle? Oh, I think it might be like a brewery, Glen, maybe Wood, Glen W. Ah, okay, yeah. I'm not sure what the local brewery in Dunfermline was. But yeah, this is uh, on the bottom there, just says Dunfermline. Yeah. A wee dug joined us on the beach there. I'm not sure if you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Russell. Okay. Uh -huh. So Dunfermline, of course, no, it's not yeah. Dundee, is it? It's no, Dunfermline. No, I thought Dundee at first, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've also found two really nice bottlenecks. Um, one older than the other. Can you spot which one that is? There's a whole bunch of finds there. Now you're asking which of these bottlenecks or bottle tops look to be the oldest. Huh? Now, We'll leave five seconds for folks to ponder that if they're watching this at home. Mm-hmm. And after five seconds, 
That's a very fast five seconds. I'm going to say the one furthest to the left. Yep, that's the one. That's the really wonky one. 17th century, that one is newer. And then I've also found this bit. And I've never found anything like it before. Actually, it could be like a salt shaker. Oh, yeah. Uh, at first, I thought it might have been like a fancy inkwell. But it's really nice. And I'm really gutted that it's not a whole piece. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's always the case though, right? <laughs> We're always gutted that it's not a whole piece. It would always be lovely to find uh -huh. a really nice big piece. Yeah. Complete, unscathed. Well, you know, worn and weathered is nice. Yeah, but I really do like these pieces. And the bottlenecks, they're going to look really nice cleaned up. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm hoping that the wind isn't going to ruin this shot and we'll maybe hear what it is that we found there. So we're just walking along with the car as usual uh -huh. and there it is. Beautiful wee piece of uh, milk glass. Mm, I hate to burst your bubble but I think it's plastic. It's milk glass. <laughs> I tell you it's milk glass. <laughs> well even if it is plastic it's still from the 1950s given the colour. So, But we'll, we'll tap it and see if it's uh, milk glass. <laughs> Oh, here's a very cool find. And right at the moment, these are extremely rare. I think in about 100, maybe 200 years time, people are going to be raving over these. What do you reckon it is? It's a frozen charlotte leg. It is, it's a frozen charlotte <laughs> of the future. Yeah, well, we'll take that, eh? <laughs> yeah, why not? It'll go with a little minion. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, liking and commenting on the videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much to everybody who's helped us through Etsy, Amazon and Ko-fi. That really does make a big difference to us, so thank you so much for that.